Hey everyone, I'm Sam or I Sam, and this is the hopefully last part of my, me going through my PlayStation 1 games. Got a lot to go through here. There's a few I've actually acquired since I filmed the last video. Got here Namco Museum Volume 3, which has a few games on it that I'm probably going to prefer to play on other compilations of Namco arcade games. But um, there's still some cool little museum features in here that are cool and exclusive, I believe, to this version. So that's kind of neat. I got uh, Wheel of Fortune 2nd Edition, which it's Wheel of Fortune. Uh, I can't really comment too much on how it stacks up to others because I just got it. I only fired it up once. But hey, it's Wheel of Fortune. It's got Vanna White in it and everything. We've got uh, a couple of Ridge Racer games. We've got Rage Racer, which I believe is considered part of the series. I never really, hardly ever played Ra Ridge Racer at all, so I can't comment on it too much. I know they're very highly regarded games and um, such. And here's also Ridge Racer Revolution. I think like this is the second one, and Ridge Racer is the third one, or maybe I have that backwards or something. But um, yeah, Ridge Racer games. Got them for nothing, so that's cool. Uh, all right, so starting off from last time, here we have uh, Saga Frontier by Squaresoft. Um, this is a uh, RPG, obviously. So the Saga games are known for being uh, pretty non-linear, and like a lot of other Saga games, this one lets you uh, choose a, a variety of from a variety of different characters at the start. So, like, you can play as like there's not like one main character. You can choose as a bunch of different characters. They all have their own little story and stuff. And um, this is pretty cool. I really like the soundtrack, but I haven't played through the game myself. And here's Saga Frontier Two, which I think is pretty much more of the same, but um, I want to say it's also, it also might be different. Yeah, I, uh, no, I think it's kind of the same basic idea of, like, choosing different characters, uh, rather than, like, having one, and it, it's kind of more open-ended than most other Japanese RPGs. Here we have, uh, Sayuki Journey West, which, West, which, um, as you can imagine, is, uh, based on that famous, uh, novel, Journey to the West, or whatever it was, novel, I, I think it's a novel, um, uh, Legend of China, rather, and, um, yeah, based on the same... Loosely based on the same thing that Dragon Ball was based on, so there's a Son Goku in this game, but obviously he's not a Saiyan from the planet of Vegeta. Um, but yeah, this game is one of those uh, Final Fantasy Tactics-style games, and it seems pretty cool. It's, it's one that's kind of under the radar, too. You don't hear people talk about this one too much, but those who do talk about it say good things, so I look forward to playing it someday. Who knows when. Uh, sheep. Uh, this is a game about, well, wouldn't you know, herding sheep. Um, and it's not like a sim or anything. It's like cartoony and amusing and stuff. And I haven't played it too much, but... Um, Seems like an interesting game. Uh, the multiplayer, I was excited about the multiplayer in this, but it turns out the multiplayer seems to be pretty darn limited. So that's kind of disappointing, but I haven't really played the single player, so I'll judge it at some point. But it seems like a cute little quirky game. Silent Bummer. This is kind of, uh, well, it's a game that where the combat involves, like, um, placing bombs. So it's kind of reminds me of Bomberman in that regard, but it's different. It's, uh, I can't say too much about it. All I can say is that when I fired this game up, it's just it seemed really, really cool. It's one of those under-the-radar games. It's, it's actually pretty rare. And you don't really hear people talk about it that much, but it's a cool game, and I look forward to playing it someday. Uh, here is uh, Sorcerer's Maze. I believe in Japan and in Europe this game is called Action Puzzle Prism Land or something like that. Basically, this is one of those Arkanoid clones, and I like Arkanoid and its clones, so uh, this game was a kind of an obvious pickup. And, like, this cover really does not represent the game really at all. Like, does not do a very good job of telling you what kind of game this is, so it's kind of weird. But, um, yeah, I'm glad to have this. It was cheap. I believe this was released as a buzz title or whatever. Uh, here's uh, Soul Blade. This is the prequel to Soul Calibur. And it has a lot of familiar faces in it if you played that game. and um, Or that series, maybe I should say. And uh, definitely not as good as Soul Calibur. It's a little hard to go back to, but still pretty good in its own right. And it's got some uh, uh, decent single-player modes on here. I haven't played it all the way to completion, but uh, it seems pretty neat. Um, so, yeah, if you're like Soul Calibur and you're interested in seeing the roots of the series... Uh, definitely worth a shot, in my opinion. Uh, Speed Punks, I got this from a friend, I think, for, like, hardly anything. And, yeah, Mario Kart clone. Can't really say too much about that. Just, these people are trying to cash in on the Mario Kart craze. Oh, uh, here we got the Spyro games. Here's Spyro 1. Spyro 1's the only one I've actually played all the way through to this point. And, uh, I like Spyro. I remember in the 90s when Spyro was, like, a really cool mascot. A popular mascot for the PlayStation. And, like, I wanted it, but I didn't have my own PlayStation for a long time. And uh, <laughs> when I eventually did, I didn't actually really play Spyro. I don't know why. But, um, yeah, it's a good game. Um, it's about it's kind of a collect-a-thon sort of game uh, that was popular around that time. Um, you know, like in the same kind of vein as Banjo-Kazooie and all those, but a little different. Being able to play as a dragon and float around and breathe fire is pretty cool. And um, the game rewards you for 100% completion and all that. Uh, pretty good game. Not like, it didn't blow me away, but it's a good game. And then Spyro 2, Ripto's Rage. I haven't played it too much, but... Um, 
does seem like a good game. I think it's supposedly better than the first one. I don't know. And then Spyro, Year of the Dragon. I'm not sure how this stacks up to Spyro 1 and 2, but I know it's considered a good game. Like, the first three on PS1 are, like, the best Spyro games, supposedly. Here we have, uh... Uh, Star Gladiator. This is a 3D fighter, and this guy this guy in the front cover is actually better known probably as a Marvel vs. Capcom 2 character than he is as a character in his own game. This is a pretty obscure fighting game from Capcom. I played it with friends once, and it was seemed okay, but, like, not... didn't blow me away. But, uh, yeah, um, I like having him for the Marvel vs. Capcom 2 uh, point of reference, I guess. Uh, Star Ocean, the second story. Um, this is a RPG, obviously, from Enix. Uh, it's the first Star Ocean game to be released in America. I've actually owned this game for a really long time, and I still haven't played through it, and I definitely want to at some point. Maybe I will this year, this coming year. Uh, as of right now, we're two days away from a new year. But anyway, um, Star Ocean, uh, the second story, has some of the worst voice acting I've ever heard in a video game, to the point where it's actually kind of funny sometimes. But um, yeah, uh, this is definitely an RPG with a lot of content, a lot of uh, deep gameplay, and um, I know it's very well made, and it's got a kind of sci-fi theme to it, which is pretty cool. Um, and yeah, I'm, I don't know why I haven't played it yet. I just, like, I tried getting into the first one. I guess that's why, because I've tried to get into the first one, and it's, it's kind of turned me off a little bit. So that kind of deterred me from starting the second one for a long time. But I'm, even if I don't like the first one, I'm still going to try the second one. Uh, Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. I think I got this for, like, hardly anything. Yeah, I haven't played this one too much. Um, but, you know, I like Star Wars. I actually do kind of like Phantom Menace, if I'm going to be honest. Like, I have some nostalgia for it. I was, like, at just the right age when it came out, so that I wasn't bitterly disappointed. Like, I kind of like the coolness of it. Of all this, like, Darth Maul and the cool Star Wars stuff, but I can't comment too much on that game, honestly. Street Fighter EX 2 Plus. Uh, I've actually barely ever played the Street Fighter EX games. Like, they're kind of the first ever 3D, at least in terms of graphics, Street Fighter games. And, yeah, I mean, they're Street Fighter games, uh, which is good, but I just have, I can't really comment on how this compares to the rest of the Street Fighter games because I haven't really played it. For some reason, just, like, nobody I ever knew, like, really played that game. Um, here we got uh, Strider 2. This one is actually brand new and sealed. And uh, this is a sequel, obviously, to Strider 1, which uh, I showed off way back in the Genesis episode, for one of the Genesis videos. Um, I, uh, even though this is sealed, I have owned an unsealed copy before. I actually don't really care for this game that much. Like, it's an uh, arcade action, but it's definitely one of those, you know, like, you really have to play it for high score, because otherwise it's just not really that fun. This is my opinion. But it is a cool game, for whatever that's worth. Uh, here's Suikoden, another RPG, this one from Konami, and, um, this cover is really bad, and it does not really, this is not the original artwork for the game, it's one of those cases where they tried to westernize the cover, is, so it didn't look so Japanese, but anyway, this is an RPG, uh, 2D graphics, um, uh, pretty good story, um, and, um, not really like a typical RPG, like, it's very, I mean, there is, like, magic and stuff, but it's not, like, your typical Final Fantasy kind of theme, there's nothing, like, no, nothing as big of a scale as, like, blowing up the world or anything that's, like, confined to, like, uh, these country or rivaling countries or whatever. I beat this game more than a decade ago, so, like, it's, it's, my memories are a little hazy. I remember it being good. I, some people really love this game in, in the series and really swear by it. I thought it was all right. Um, uh, I wasn't blown away by Suikoden, but it's pretty good. It's got some really good music. Um, yeah, yeah, I feel like RPGs, it's, it's worth a shot. Uh, and also, it's worth a shot because here we have Suikoden 2, the sequel, and this one is definitely a lot better than the first one. Suikoden 2 I did enjoy quite a bit, and uh, it's got a very good story, good characters, um, and again, it's been a long time since I beat this game, so it's hard for me to give like a real proper review. But, um, oh yeah, I, I should mention that the, one of the draws of Suikoden, and Suik this, the whole series of Suikoden, is that every game has like 108 recruitable characters for your team. Not all of them are fighting party members, some of them just do stuff in your base, like cook meals or... I don't know, shop, set up a shop or whatever in your base. So um, it's kind of a collect them, got to catch them all sort of vibe going with Suikoden. So that's one of the uh, points of appeal, if that makes any sense. Um, yeah, maybe I'll play Suikoden 2 again someday. I did really like it. I should probably play the sequels, actually. I haven't. I never played Suikoden 3 and beyond. Here's Swagman. This is um, kind of a Zelda-ish game, I think, uh, with... Uh, I want to say the graphics are 2D, but maybe it's, like, mostly 2D with, like... 3D-ish looking characters, I don't know, but uh, I think it's got somewhat of like a horror motif to it, like a horror theme, uh, but like I haven't played this one too much, I've known about it for a long time, but like I just have never like gotten around to it, but uh, yeah, Swagman, cheap, pretty cheap game, the Sega Saturn version only in Europe that's really expensive, just go with the PlayStation version, 
Tales of Destiny. This was the first Tales of game that ever got released in America. Namco's popular um, RPG series. I think this is the first one I've gotten to in general, actually. Tales. This is the first Tales of game. I really like Tales of. It's one of my favorite RPG series. And um, this is actually the one that sold the best in Japan to this date, I believe. Uh, in my opinion, Tales of Destiny is good, but not one of the best in the series. Um, it's way too easy. There's no like higher difficulty mode. There's no manual control. You're stuck with semi-auto control, which is not my favorite. Tales of games are known for... I mean, they're RPGs like Final Fantasy, but they um, have real-time battle systems. So when you get into a battle, you're actually like uh, moving around freely and attacking and stuff. So instead of like it being turn-based, it's not turn-based. And Tales of Tales games are known for their very colorful characters... Uh, oftentimes good humor and usually fun gameplay. Uh, this is a good game. Not one of my favorite Tales games, but definitely still was worth playing, and I enjoyed it. Uh, then we have uh, Tales of Destiny 2, also known as Tales of Eternia. And this is... Uh, the story, story-wise, it has nothing to do with the first Tales of, with Tales of Destiny, because, I mean, in, in, the game's true title is Tales of Eternia. It's not a sequel to Tales of Destiny. But, um, yeah, like, it, the rest of the series, it's, um, you know, got kind of the action battle system and everything. This is, in my opinion, much improved over Tales of Destiny. Um, the gameplay is so much fun. It's more fast-paced and fluid. And um, like the characters a lot. Uh, well, at least um, Merity is really good. The rest of the characters are all right. Not the best in the series. But, um, yeah, just it was, the game is just a lot of fun to play. A lot of, a lot of humor and, and uh, fun moments and, and solid gameplay. And, uh, yeah, I definitely recommend it if you like Tales. Here's uh, Team Buddies. This is a pretty rare PS1 game, actually. Um, it's kind of a... I'm not, sh- I'm not sure exactly what the right word is. I want to say... It's, it's not like a, uh, an RTS, but it's like it's like an action strategy game, maybe is the best way to put it. Like, you have squads, and like you're trying to... There's different unit types and stuff, and like you're competing against enemy enemy teams to... like I forget exactly what the objective is. I tried the single player in this. I didn't really care for the single player. This is probably more of a multiplayer oriented game, but I still to this day haven't had a party together to um, actually really dive into the multiplayer. So I can't fully comment on it. Um, here is uh, Tecmo's Deception Invitation to Darkness. I've already talked about in a previous episode about the sequel to this game, Kagero Deception 2. And the, the Deception games are about like building a uh, place, like a building or palace or whatever, and uh, people walk in and you're supposed to set traps to kill them. This one is a little stands out, I, I think, a little bit from the rest of the series because, like, it's you're like actually like involved with Satan or something crazy like that. Um, yeah, so um, they're very different game, intriguing game. I'll give it a shot sometime to see if it's my cup of tea. Uh, disc only game here we have Tekken, the original Tekken, and uh, yeah, early three D fighting game. I've just never really played Tekken that much. Um, oh, and here we have uh, right here Tekken Two right here. And then um, after that, we have, can you guess what's next? Tekken 3. Tekken 3 is considered one of the best, definitely like the best of the three PlayStation games and one of the best games. It was one of the highest rated PlayStation games in its era in general. And I just have never like played Tekken. I don't know why. Like, I don't know. Like I've, I've played it a little bit, but hardly ever. I've never like really like sat down with Tekken and learned how to properly play it or learn any combos or anything. So I've never really like gotten the, the proper experience and seen why it's so great, or why people think it is. Um, so yeah, I wish I... I guess I'm going to have to at some point. Um, Tenchu Stealth Assassins. A, a, what did I say? Assassins? I don't know. Tell, Tenchu Stealth Assassins. Uh, this is a game... Gee, I guess... I wonder if you can guess what kind of game this is. It's a stealth game, stealth action ninja game, so if you like Metal Gear, but you want something a little more ninja, I guess this is the way to go. Uh, consider it a good game. I haven't played it that much, though. Uh... Here we have The Game of Life. Uh, I played this game as a kid uh, on the PC version because uh, like my cousin had it or something. My, my, my aunt and uncle's family had it. And um, it's a uh, humorous take on the board game. Um, it's got like these witty cutscenes and stuff. It's really not like anything that special. Like um, Play it sometime when you have friends, maybe like once or twice, and then you'll probably get tired of it. Um, but um, yeah, kind of amusing. Not like anything really that great. But like for me, it's got some nostalgia value, so that's the main reason why I own it. Uh, the Grand Stream Saga. I believe this game was um, developed by uh, Quintet, the people who made like the Soul Blazer trilogy on Super Nintendo, Illusion of Guy and Terra Enigma and all that. And this game is apparently not as good as those. I've played it a little bit, but not too much. Um, it's got kind of a weird combat system, but like you know, you got some puzzle solving going on in here and stuff. And um, yeah, I think reception on this game is kind of mixed. Some people like it, some people don't. Someday I'll play it a little more and see what I think. 
uh, The Legend of Dragoon. This is a RPG by... I forget if Sony actually, like, developed it. I think they did. But um, this was supposed to be, like, kind of like the next big Final Fantasy VII thing. And I think it was pretty popular, but not as quite as big as they thought it would be. Actually, um, the greatest hits version of this game is far more common than the Black Label. So I made it a point to get the Black Label version. Um, yeah, uh, it's another one where, like, you ask a lot of different people what they think, and you'll get a lot of different answers. Some people really don't like it. Some people do like it. I'll give it a shot sometime and see really what I think. Um, I think the battle system is a little different. I think it involves, like... Uh, Trigger commands and stuff, like, you know, pressing buttons to make your attacks better and stuff. Uh, here's The Unholy War, which is another game. I just need to, like, play it a little more. It's, like, kind of one of those, like, I think it's, like, an arena fighter sort of deal. And I'm probably going to want to have a, friends to play this with, but I don't know. We'll see. Um, huh, we got The Weakest Link, a game show game. And I've never never watched the show, really. So, um, I don't know. It's, I mean, I, I like game show games. I like trivia and stuff. I got this for, like, nothing from a friend, I believe. Um, so that's probably why I have it. I'll probably break it out when I have, like, a friend or something over. But, actually, I think, I'm pretty sure this game is actually considered not that good of a version, but, I don't know. I'll still, like, have a little fun with it. Uh, Thousand Arms, yet another RPG that I have to actually sit my butt down and spend time with. Uh, this one kind of is, is sets itself apart because it has, like, dating sim elements and stuff. And, um, but it is definitely also, uh, a legitimate RPG. And there's voice acting and stuff, which was not totally common at the time. I guess it was starting to become standard. Uh, you got some cool stuff that comes with it, like uh, stickers and stuff, and I have it all in there, but I don't want to open it because this, this video is already too long, and this is not all about Thousand Arms. But I, I need to play that sometime. Uh, Friends of Fate, again, a game I've played, I mean, I, I've owned this game for ages and ages. Um, I've played it a little bit, like, I don't know, like an hour or two. Uh, 3D action adventure game with some RPG elements, and um, seems uh, pretty cool. I like some of the music in this game a lot. Um, you got two different characters to play as that each play a little differently, which is cool. Um, last time I tried to play it, it didn't really grab me too much, but I'll give it another shot sometime. Um, here's, uh, Thunder Force 5, Perfect System, localized by Working Designs with their fancy artwork. Um, and, uh, Shoot'em Up, obviously, and, uh, Thunder Force is a pretty solid series of Shoot'em Ups, and, um, this one is considered good. Now, again, I just, I need to play it. I need to play, actually sit down my butt down and play it. Um... Tiger Woods 99 PGA Tour Golf. Friend gave this to me for like nothing. And um, yeah, I mean, I like sports games. So, you know, I'll give it a try sometime, see if I like it. Uh, here is uh, Toomba. This is a pretty popular game for the PlayStation. A lot of people really like it. Um, it's kind of a uh, non linear platformer, I guess I would call it. Um, and there's like a lot of different objectives you'll get as you go around the world. And, you know, you get a request and then you can go somewhere. I guess you would actually sort of call it like a kind of one of those Metroid Castlevania style games, Metroidvania as they say, sort of like that, but not exactly like that. It's got some RPG elements too. I actually tried playing T Tomba for a while and I didn't really like it that much. Um, there were some things about it that bothered me. Uh, it's kind of hard to figure out what you're, you're really supposed to do. Um, but, uh, you know, there's some things I like about it. I like the soundtrack a lot. I say that a lot. Boy, this, these series of videos is me like saying the same things over and over and over again, isn't it? Uh, Tomba 2, The Evil Sign Return, which is kind of more of the same. This one is full 3D graphics, whereas I think the first one had some uh, sprites in there. Um, yeah, I think it's kind of the same basic idea. I think the first one is generally considered better, but I can't comment on that. Finally, a game that I've actually like played all the way through and I can comment on. Torniko The Last Hope. This is one of those mystery dungeon games, so like Sheer and the Wanderer, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, uh, with, of course, a Dragon Quest theme. And uh, it's a really good one. I like this one a lot. Um... I will say the final boss is really stinking unfair, and, and I hate him, but I did eventually beat him anyway. Uh, but yeah, fun game, randomly generated dungeon, so it's a little different every time you play. I really like it. Uh, if you like Mystery Dungeon or Dragon Quest, it's probably worth a look. Uh, here we have um, Trap Gunner, another one of those like kind of uncommon, obscure games. It seems really cool. It's got like uh, multiplayer in here, which seems pretty cool. Uh, some kind of action game, as you can see. But I can't say too much. I think it's about, like, setting traps and stuff. Yeah. I need to... Trap Gunner combines real-time strategy, fighting, and an overhead shooter into one game, according to PSM Magazine. Yeah, I'll give it a shot sometime. Uh, Triple Play 98. This is actually a game from my childhood, because I would go over my uh, neighbor Jason's house, who was several years older than me. He got this game when it came out, and I remember playing it with him. So I got this, actually, as a, um, as a uh, nostalgia piece, because I played it back in the day when it was new. And I also have uh, Triple Play 2000, which I got from a friend for pretty much nothing. Which, um, yeah, I don't know if I'll keep this one or not. Um, but, you know, I'll give it a shot sometime. See if it's a good uh, version of baseball. 
Turnabout, uh, this is not an Ace Attorney game. This is a uh, puzzle game that involves, like, rotating the stage around and sliding blocks in this ball thing around until uh, it fits in the puzzle. And, uh, yeah, I like games like this, so uh, I'll give this a shot sometime. Really try and uh, solve it. Uh, we got some uh, Twisted Metal going on here. Twisted Metal is a popular, very early PlayStation game, Vehicular Combat, where you're uh, driving around your cars that are equipped with weapons and guns and missiles and stuff. Uh, and it's uh, considered a good multiplayer game. I played this way back in the day. My neighbor Jason had it. And um, I think Twisted Metal is alright. It's not like my favorite multiplayer game, but it's, 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 it's alright. And Twisted Metal 2 we got here. Can't say too much on like the different games in the series and how they stack up. Uh, and then we have uh, Twisted Metal 3, which I know is kind of a controversial entry in the series. A lot of people really don't like 3, but there are some people who do, and I can't really give my own opinion, I'm afraid. Here is uh, um, Jammer Lammy, which is uh, the uh, spiritual successor to Parappa the Rapper. And kind of the same kind of deal. Kind of difficult gameplay because you don't really get feedback as to like what you did wrong, I believe. Well, I haven't really tried to get into this one. I have tried to get into Parappa and kind of had trouble. Um, I have actually... Uh, uh, I went to a con this year that had the guy who did the art for Parappa and Um Jammer Lemmy, uh, which was pretty cool. And so uh, I kind of got a little extra connection to those games that way. Uh, here's uh, Vagrant Story, another game I've had for a really long time, and I've played like a few hours of it, but then stopped. Uh, a very unique game, kind of like an RPG, but like, I don't know, it's like, it's like you... Plat there's, I don't know if there's any platforming in it, but, like, you basically you move around in real time as if it were an action game, but you can, like, stop at any point to, like, choose to launch an attack on a nearby enemy or something. And there's some, like, really uh, unique mechanics in this game. Like, there's something called Risk, which, like, as it goes up, you will give more damage, but you can also take more damage and stuff like that. It's got, like, a story that some people really like, but I can't really say too much. I played a few hours of it a long time ago. I really have to start it all over again. Uh, Valkyrie Profile, another game, uh, this game I almost beat, but didn't. Uh, I've had it for a long time, that was a long time ago. Uh, but Valkyrie Profile is a really cool game, uh, very different, um, it's an RPG with, like, some 2D platforming areas and stuff, and it involves, um, you're a Valkyrie and you, like, uh, collect souls of the dead, and, like, you see all these dramatic cutscenes of these people dying and stuff, and they join your party then, and then, like, you can, like, send them to... Valhalla or whatever to like join the army or whatever and um but there's like a good ending where the most of the good story bits are where you have to do very specific stuff um I guess the main complaint I have with Valkyrie Profile is that it's kind of guide reliant like if you don't have a guide to this game you're going to miss out on a lot and not understand a lot of things it's kind of hard to get into but it's a lot of fun really good well made game uh great music and stuff a lot of voice actors from Pokemon which is kind of funny but they do a really good job uh definitely recommend Valkyrie Profile um, Vandal Hearts, uh, strategy RPG from Konami, considered a very good game, seems pretty cool, uh, but, and again, just one of those that I just haven't gotten to yet, and then we have Vandal Hearts 2, kind of more of the same, but same deal, I haven't really played it, um, Vanguard Bandits, uh, another, uh, game that's, uh, another strategy RPG, uh, this one, uh, as you can tell, it's localized by Working Designs, another game I've had absolutely forever, um, and I've actually been meaning to get to this, like, really, really soon. Like, I really want to play this game soon. And I plan to do that. Um, there's, like, uh, multiple paths you can go through um, when you play this game. Like, uh, if you do certain things, you can, like, send the story in a different direction. And I think that's pretty cool. It's got, like, the working designs lo type of localization with a lot of humor uh, added in, if you're into that sort of thing. But it seems like a cool strategy RPG. Here's WCW Backstage Assault, wrestling game. Can't say too much about it. I kind of like wrestling games, particularly the N64 ones, which we'll get to. Uh, here's uh, Wheel of Fortune. Oh, wait, I already have... Yeah, I just got second edition. Here's, I guess, the first edition. I can't say too much about it, because I got it for, like, nothing. When you have friends, you get, like, cheap games. Uh, who wants to be a millionaire second edition? I have actually played Millionaire on the PC uh, some way back in the day, which is kind of the same deal as this. Yeah, I like Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. I think they're fun. And this is uh, not a bad version of it. Uh, and then... Millionaire 3rd Edition, which I think is basically the same thing with more questions. That's kind of all I have to say about that. Uh, Wild 9, um, I got this for cheap at like a tag sale. Uh, and I want to say this is like an action game, but I can't say too much about it. I got it for cheap. I need to play it. Um, here's Wild Arms, a game I have actually beaten. It's an RPG. This is a pre-Final Fantasy VII RPG, I believe. It's got a cool like Wild West theme and a really good soundtrack. And... Um, uh, there's a cool puzzle game, 
puzzle-based gameplay. You have three party members, and they all have like different tools to help get you through dungeons and solve puzzles. And I liked that. Uh, the battle system is all right, but not really anything that special. Like the gameplay was good. I'd say this is like a pretty good RPG, but not like a great RPG. I wouldn't put this at the top of my recommended list, but it's, it was good. And then uh, Wild Arms 2, which I have not played, and I look forward to it. This game has a really good soundtrack, I can tell you that much, but can't really comment on the rest. I think it has kind of the same dungeon-crawling sort of gameplay. Well, I mean, I don't want to call them, like, it's not strictly dungeon-crawling, but, like, it, they, the dungeons are more puzzle-based than your typical RPG. Wipeout 3. Wipeout is a series of futuristic racing games. Kind of F-Zero-ish. A little different, though. And I've never really played them that much. Uh, I will sometime, though. I keep saying that. Wipeout XL, it's another one. I believe this is actually the second one. I think this comes before Wipeout 3. But, um, yeah, Futuristic Racer. Fun. Uh, Worms World Party. Worms uh, is a fun series by Team 17 where y you're, um, you have an army of worms uh, on this 2D level and like you take turns one at a time. But, well, when you have your turn, you move around freely and you can you have one weapon shot per turn and you're trying to eliminate the whole team. And uh, they're very fun uh, strategic games. Uh, and with some humor mixed in, and um, but this is not the best version of Worms World Party. The PC version is really ideal, and I believe the Dreamcast version is better than this, but I haven't actually played the Dreamcast version, so I don't know. The PC is probably the best way to go. Actually, get Worms Armageddon on Steam. That's probably the one to go for. X-Men Mutant Academy 2. Got this for a pretty good deal. It's a fighting game. Uh, can't say too much about it, honestly. But yeah, I know it's considered to be pretty good, so I'll give it a shot sometime. Probably when I have a friend over or something. Here's uh, Xeno Gears, Squaresoft RPG, a uh, popular game, um, uh, RPG, I haven't played it too much. I played like, I want to say like two to four hours of it, and I kind of got bored, if I'm going to be honest with you. The uh, game didn't really grab me that much, but a lot of people do really like this game and like the story. It's got some like, uh, I think it touches on like religious themes and stuff, and it uh, sets itself apart a little bit. Um, and, and Xeno Saga, it, even though made by a different company, is like the spiritual successor with some references to Xeno Gears. Um, you don't know Jack. I really like this game. It's a trivia game with uh, a lot of humor in it and uh, very quirky and memorable and fun. And uh, up, to pl up to three players. And um, yeah, uh, just I mean, if you like trivia, go out and get this game. Like, it's dirt cheap and it's a lot of fun. Totally worth it. Love You Don't Know Jack. And there's also... Uh, you Don't Know Jack Mach 2, which is definitely not as good as the first one. And they have a different uh, host, and he's not nearly as funny or amusing as Cookie Masterson in the first game. So um, that kind of, for me, kind of spoils it. Now we're going to do Japanese games. We're already at 27 minutes. Okay, let's just zoom through these Japanese games here. Here's uh, Arkanoid Returns. I've already talked about Arkanoid. It's one of those breakout style games where you're, you have a paddle and you're hitting a ball around. And it's, it's really good. Recommend it. There's also, actually, you should probably get Arkanoid uh, R2000. It's like the same thing, but but I think it has analog. Kuan Pa, I already talked about this on Super Famicom, so go back and look at that. Um, but this is a puzzle game, and uh, this version has, like, different music and stuff, but it's, I think it's mostly the same game. Here's uh, Ganbare Goemon, and I believe the title is Uchu Kaizoku Akogingu, or almost something like that. Um I didn't like this game as much as I thought I would. A lot of people say this game is really great. I didn't think it was quite that great. But granted, there was no translation patch, so I missed out on a lot of the humor and the dialogue and stuff. Um, but um, I do like Goemon games in general, and it's got it's got good music. I say that a lot. Um, maybe I'll give it a shot when it gets an English patch. Uh, Gradius Gaiden. This is one of the absolute best Gradius games. I've talked about Gradius before. Um, this one gives you the ability to rearrange your power-up bar, so like you can... Put shield near the front, which is great, and put double near the back, which is great. Um, and it's got great music and great gameplay. It's just great. Like, you have to play this if you like Gradius at all. Oh, it gets even better, though. Here's Harmful Park, one of my favorite shooter maps, and heck, one of my favorite games in general. Uh, this is by Skything Systems, which company that made, like, almost nothing. But, boy, do they make a great game here. This is, uh, I guess what you call a cute em up It's uh, cutesy and bizarre and uh, amusing uh, levels and enemies and stuff. And it's just got really, really good gameplay. Um, there's like four different weapons that you can power up individually, and uh, you can switch between them. And only the weapon you have equipped will be powered down when you die. So it's not you're like you're totally screwed if you die and you lose all your power-ups. And it's just a really, really solid, fun game. Um, IQ Final, this is the... I guess, I don't know if this is a sequel or more like an expansion to Intelligent Cube, but I already talked about Intelligent Cube before, so go back and look at that. This one got released in Europe, but I don't have a way to play those games. European games. 
Kitchen Panic. This is one of the absolute most, one of my favorite, like, really obscure games. This game is so obscure here. I never hear people talking about this game. This is a really fun 2D platformer with uh, quirky controls, um, and there's it's kind of collect-a-thon sort of deal, so you can go back and, um, like, try and collect all the stuff in the levels to unlock more stuff, and it's just really fun, and I like the music and, and the, the kind of the kitchen theme of it, and I uh, highly recommend it, uh, Kitchen Panic. Here's uh, Mortal Kombat 2, weirdly released only, only in Japan. Um, nowadays, this version is honestly pretty much obsolete. Uh, you should probably just get one of the arcade compilations that just has the arcade version. Um, it's not the best port in the world. Uh, back in its time, it was probably the best home port, but not, not anymore. Uh, oh, no, this is a quirky game. It's kind of like an Endless Runner sort of deal, I think. But, you know, it's got some twists twists in it. It's actually like kind of, I think this game was like kind of the brainchild of like a Japanese celebrity or something weird like that. Yeah, this game is definitely very bizarre and um, very amusing. Can't say too much about it because I haven't played it, but you can go check out Jimmy Hoppe's video, Import Gaming for the Win, if you want to like to know more. Ore no Riori, I think that, I believe that translates to my cooking. This is kind of like, I guess, arcadey cooking game where like um, there's a bunch of customers and you have to fulfill their orders in time and it's really hectic and stuff. And uh, a lot of people really like this game. I think it's all right. Um, it's kind of difficult, if I'm going to be honest. And also, there's a little bit of a language barrier, too, I think. But um, a fun game. The, the the cooking all pretty much all revolves around using the analog sticks, so it's one of those games. And um, I'll probably play it even more at some point. Uh, here is uh, Para Wars, which I got because I'm a Proteus fan. Uh, sadly, I'll probably never, ever get a chance to really play this game because there's a huge language barrier too many kanji, Japanese menus in kanji, and um, this game is really obscure. I don't think that many people really care about it, but it's very much like an Advance Wars type of game, uh, which is kind of amusing. And it's Parodius characters, which I like. But yeah, I, I have it mostly just as a collection piece. Uh, here is uh, Pepsi Man! This is a game uh, featuring the Japanese mascot for Pepsi, like a superhero, and um, this game actually has a lot of English in it. Uh, it has like an American actor in it who talks in English. And so, uh, the, it's very import-friendly. Basically, this is a game is another, like, one of those kind of endless runner kind of games. Only it's not endless. The levels do have an end. But, um, you're trying to collect as many Pepsi bottles as you can and also just survive to the end of the level. And it's a lot of fun, uh, great humor, and just solid game. Not, it's not like a terribly long game, but it's, um, ch fun and challenging, I thought. Um, I had a lot of fun with it, and I enjoyed the cutscenes. Very funny, and I recommend it. Here's, uh... Pekinia X. I already talked about Pekinia on the Super Famicom video, and so go back and watch that if you want to know what Pekinia is. It's a puzzle game, and it's good. This version, I think, is kind of the same with just new music, but I could be wrong. There could be more stuff. Poppin' Music 2. Uh, Poppin' Music is a series of rhythm games by Konami. I do have the correct controller for it, but I just don't really like these games on the home console. The, like, the music just feels like weirdly out of sync with the beats, and it just doesn't work to me. So I might get rid of that at some point. Uh, Puyo Puyo Sun. I've already talked about Puyo Puyo games already. Um, actually, I have this, this on Sega Saturn, I believe, and uh, I believe these versions might be slightly different, but not terribly different. Puyo Puyo Sun Expert. Yeah, I think this version might have something the Saturn version doesn't, but I don't remember what it is offhand. Ooh, here's a good one. Rakugaki Showtime. This is a treasure game. It's like an arena brawler, I guess. I guess you would call this a dodgeball fighting game with a, like a colored pencil graphical style. It's got also Marina from uh, Mischief Makers, which I haven't gotten to yet in these videos. But um, crazy fun game. It gets super chaotic. Um, when you play four players and it's delightful. Uh, I guess I would say the uh, balance is not quite there. Like, there's definitely characters that are way stronger or way weaker than others, but that's fine. It's just a fun, silly, crazy, hilarious, good time. Highly recommended. Here is um, Snowbo Kids Plus. This is the this is a remake of Snowboard Kids in the N64. Uh, this version adds, like, anime cutscenes and some new content, such as, like, a new character and, like, New stuff, and it's got a CD quality soundtrack, which is great. But if you only have to go with one version, 64 is definitely the way to go because this version does not have four player, even if you have a multi tap. And that sucks because that's why you play Snowboard Kids in the first place. But I like having this just as kind of an alternate version. Here we have uh, Tales of Fantasia. This is a full fledged remake of the Super Famicom RPG, which started the whole Tales of series. And this, this came after Tales of Destiny and incorporated some of the things Tales of Destiny introduced. This is a really good um, remake, honestly. They polish the game a lot. It's better than Tales of Destiny and the original Tales of Fantasia. Great music, great characters, just a great game. It's got an English translation, so play it. Highly recommended. 
uh, Keyring Saga, this is from the dude who made Fire Emblem, and this game just screams Fire Emblem. Um, I read a review for this game that someone posted a couple years ago, and they ripped in a new one and told all the reasons why it's not very good. So I guess I'm probably never going to actually play it, because I guess it's not nearly as good as actual Fire Emblem. But, um, yeah, it's a neat little collection piece, at least. Here is uh, The Adventures of Little Ralph. This is a fun 2D action platformer thingy. And uh, I have actually beaten it. I believe I've beaten it in hard mode, even. And uh, really fun, a solid 2D action and uh, high score oriented. So you don't have to play for high score, but it's a game that definitely has the high score gamers in mind. And um, uh, really good game. I like the music, too. Uh, definitely one if you enjoy old school 2D arcade gaming. Umihara Kawase Shun 2nd Edition. I love Umihara Kawase. I've already talked about a little bit about her uh, in the Super Famicom video. The game, it's the game where you have the rubber fishing line and you can swing around and it's got really good physics and you can like bounce around and fling yourself and stuff because the physics are so sophisticated. And uh, the sequel does not disappoint. It's more of the same great stuff from the original game. And um, it's got a little, it's got more stuff for the expert players in there. There's a lot of more hard courses than in the first game. A little bit less enemies too, but that's okay. Love Umahara Kawase Shun 2nd Edition. I recommend it. And then, last but not least, we have Vib Ribbon. This is a rhythm game uh, that's known for... Um, basically, you can put in your own music CD and it'll generate a level based on your music, which is pretty cool. And um, this game is, I believe, available on the American PlayStation Network store, at least on PS3, if not PS4 as well, I think. So uh, you can go check it out on there. This game did get released in Europe back in the day, but I have no way to play that one. So I have the Japanese version. And, uh, yeah, quirky little music game. It's funny seeing my... My dad likes to write music. I, it's funny seeing my dad's own music in a music rhythm game like this. But, um, yep. So that is all my PlayStation games in three videos, I believe. So, um, thank you for watching. Uh, and stay tuned because... What is next? I believe Nintendo 64? Or is it Virtual Boy? I don't know, something's up next. Something Nintendo, I believe, is up next. So whatever it is, whether it's Virtual Boy or 64 or what, stay tuned. This is Samurai Sam saying have a great rest of your day.